Have you ever thought that old broken spark plugs and loose rivets rattling around in your toolbox could become the stars of amazing DIY projects? Don't let them sit idle in the corner of your workshop. Transform them into unique and useful creations. With just a bit of creativity, some strong glue and a few simple tools, you can breed new life into materials that seem useless, saving money while adding your personal touch. Ready to turn ideas into reality and make your living space truly pop? Let's get started today. There are several types of spark plugs here, but I chose this one because it will be more convenient for later use. Next, I'll remove the top part of the spark plug. This step needs to be done carefully because the metal parts are quite tight. Now I'll drill to widen the hole. This will make it easier to insert and attach other parts later on. When drilling, you should keep the spark plug steady and use a bit that fits the size you need. Next, I'll insert the rivet head into the hole I just drilled. It fits quite snugly, which helps keep it stable. I'll apply a small amount of strong adhesive around the base to make sure it stays firmly in place. Then I'll use a rivet gun to secure it firmly in place. By squeezing the handle, the rivet expands inside the hole, locking it tightly to the spark plug. You'll hear a small pop when it's fully set. That's how you know it's secure. This step ensures the joint is solid and won't loosen over time, making the whole piece much more durable and ready for further assembly. Here, I have some plug prongs that I've taken apart, and now I'm going to repurpose them. These metal pieces are still in good condition, so instead of throwing them away, I'll make use of them for this project. Their shape and size are perfect for creating small details or connectors, which will add both function and unique look to the final piece. Next. I'll attach the plug prongs to the rivet and secure them with a screw. I'll align the holes carefully so the parts fit tightly together, then insert the screw and tighten it with a screwdriver. This will hold the prongs firmly in place, ensuring they don't wobble or come loose. Once everything is tightened, the structure feels solid and balanced, ready to move on to the finishing touches. Now I'm going to grind the tip to make it a bit sharper. I'll use a grinder and carefully shape the end, moving it slowly to keep the angle even. After grinding, the tip is noticeably sharper and more defined. It tapers smoothly to a fine point with clean edges and a metallic sheen. Next, I'll prepare a small piece of wood to make the handle. It already has a groove in it, so I'll make use of that. Now I'll drill the hole wider so I can insert the spark plug base into it. I'll use a drill bit that matches the diameter of the spark plug, making sure to keep it straight while drilling to avoid cracking the wood. Next, I'll insert the spark plug into the hole I just drilled. It fits tightly, which is perfect for keeping it stable. I'll apply a bit of strong adhesive around the base before pushing it in to make sure it stays firmly in place.
Now I'll move on to the electrical wire section. I prepared a short piece of insulated wire that will add both a functional and decorative touch to the build. First, I'll strip off a bit of the outer coating on both ends to expose the copper inside. Next, I'll connect the wire to a few screws on the plug prongs. I'll loop the exposed copper ends around the screws and tighten them with a screwdriver to make sure the connection is firm and secure. This not only keeps the wire in place, but also gives it a realistic mechanical look. I'll place the wire neatly into the groove on the handle and secure it with electrical tape. Wrapping the tape tightly will keep the wire from moving and give the handle a clean, finished look. I'll make sure the tape overlaps slightly for better hold and to match the overall aesthetic of the piece. Once done, the wire sits firmly in place, blending naturally with the design, while adding that authentic handcrafted touch. To complete the wiring, I'll attach an alligator clip to the other end. It makes the connection quick, secure, and easy to attach when needed. I'll add another wire to connect from a negative terminal. This will complete the circuit and allow current to flow properly through the soldering tip. For this wire, I'll attach alligator clips to both ends. That way, it's easy to connect and disconnect from both the power source and the device. The alligator clips act as flexible terminals. They grip tightly onto wires, battery terminals, or metal parts, making it easy to test and adjust connections during prototyping. Plus, they save time by eliminating the need for permanent joints. And just like that, I've finished building a small welding machine. All the parts fit together perfectly, from the spark plug and rivet to the handle and wires, forming a compact, functional tool. It's simple yet powerful enough for light DIY tasks. For the power source, I'll be using a standard motorcycle battery. It's a 12V lead acid battery, powerful enough to heat up the soldering tip and stable for small electronics work. This type of battery is easy to find, rechargeable, and delivers consistent current, which makes it perfect for our DIY soldering project. Now it's time to test it. I'll connect the alligator clip to the battery. Now it's time to put our DIY soldering tool to the test. I'll begin by trying to solder onto this razor blade, which is thin and metallic, making a good challenge for the tool.
after soldering the two razor blades together. The joint feels surprisingly strong, even when applying pressure or flexing slightly. The blades stay firmly connected without any signs of separation. The solder has bonded well to the thin metal surfaces, creating a solid bridge between them. Next, I'll test the heat of the welder on a metal can. I'll place the tip carefully against the surface and observe how quickly it starts to scorch or melt the metal. The spark and heat should leave a visible mark almost instantly, showing that the welder produces enough energy for light metal work. I'll make sure to handle it cautiously, keeping my hands and surroundings safe while checking its effectiveness. In conclusion, this DIY welder project shows how you can turn old forgotten materials into a functional and creative tool. From repurposing spark plugs and rivets to using a simple battery and wires, every step adds both practicality and unique handcrafted touch. It's not just about building a tool, it's about exploring creativity, learning new skills, and making the most of what you already have. With a little patience and careful work, even small, simple parts can become something truly useful and impressive. 